Ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. This is Barack Obama, and we are here at the first Obama Foundation Summit in Chicago. We've brought together some amazing young people from across the country, from 60 nations around the world, people of different backgrounds, different professions, but all of them are asking themselves, how can they make a difference and bring about change in their communities, in their countries, in the world? And we've got three wonderful examples of that right here, and I'm having a chance to uh, talk to him this morning. All right, so we've got uh, Mandeep Singh, who is the co-founder of Flip National. Mandeep's gonna tell us about uh, what the organization is. We've got Cassandra Begay, who is the co-founder of Pandos. And we have Daniel Flynn, co-founder of Thank You. So, Mandeep, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, how you got started in, in wanting to give back to your community and uh, what are you hoping to get out of the summit? Definitely. Thank you for having us and organizing the summit. It's an honor to be here. Um, as, as I said, my name is Mandeep and I'm from New York City originally. Um, my family moved to Queens, New York from Punjab. And I lived this very two world duality in Queens where I was a New Yorker born and raised. But I also had this tie to this whole other immigrant community, this working class background. Um, and they were often struggling to find resources and, and get the opportunities they needed to move forward. Um, and so my journey on my educational journey through Columbia, uh, fellow alma mater, um, I've learned that I'm really passionate about building organizations that empower under-resourced communities. Um, most recently, I've been doing that through first-gen student activism. So I started Columbia's First Generation Low Income Partnership, which is a dedicated organization for poor kids on campus to get the resources and the access and the community they need to succeed. And currently, I graduated in 2015, we started Flip National, which is trying to do the same thing, build community, but not do it across college campuses um, throughout the country. That sounds fantastic. The uh, And uh, what do your parents uh, make of you getting all active and involved? Because sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, that first generation of immigrants, they're coming here, they, you know, want to keep their head down and mm -hmm. work hard and make sure you're a doctor or an <laughs> engineer or <laughs> something. And, yeah. and the uh, it's, it's the second generation that sometimes this starts feeling as if, you know what, uh, Mm -hmm. My voice matters, mm -hmm. uh, and and I can get engaged and get involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, hopefully, they're proud uh, of some of the stuff that you're doing now. Yeah, incredibly proud. Not at first, right? When I when I told them I wanted to be an urban studies major, it didn't go out too well. Right. Um, but uh, at first, they were definitely taken aback that I wanted to do community organizing work. But now that they're seeing the impact that I'm able to have with my friends and my younger folks in my community, um, it, they've been incredibly proud to 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 raise me, and I'm I'm grateful for for them. So, the uh, what are you hoping to get out of the summit? Mm. For me, the summit is there's there's a lot going on in the world. There was a lot happened in my in my native city yesterday, as a lot of us know. Um, there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of pain. But for me, this summit has been incredible energy and incredible healing energy. And I'm looking to use the people and the family that I've made here um, to continue working together and building a, a better world for us all. Fantastic. So, uh, Cassandra, uh, the uh, tell me about Pandos and and tell me a little bit about how you got involved as somebody who obviously has a enormous pride of uh, being uh, a member of uh, the first Americans. Uh, t t tell me about how you've thought about uh, your activism in your communities. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a, it's a great honor to be here. And I just want to let you know that I'm really proud of you for carrying this on and the good work. I am a member of the largest Native American tribe, the Navajo tribe, I'm from the Diné people. And I am, I, growing up on an Indian reservation, I saw the injustices that were done to our people and oftentimes how our voice is suppressed and our voice is really made to be out small and it's really difficult to, um, elevate that voice. So I wanted to make a change, a positive change. And so what I did is I co-founded a nonprofit called Pandos. It stands for Peaceful Advocates for Native American Dialogue and Organizing Support. I'm a community organizer and advocate for Native American communities and populations in the Four Corners regions region of the United States. And our nonprofit primarily serves to elevate that indigenous and Native American voice around Native American issues. And we help organize also around human rights and protecting our shared home, uh, Mother Earth. So uh, obviously, you know, uh, tribal 
communities, Native American populations, you know, uh, suffer from a lot of challenges, but also, you know, there's enormous, uh, you know, resources and, uh, you know, opportunity to do wonderful things. Uh, and, and sometimes we focus only on the, the negative and not enough of, on the positive. Uh, as an organizer, how do you think about um, tapping into, uh, you know, the amazing uh, young people who are there what kinds of opportunities do you see uh, moving forward for Pandos to really bring about change uh, in, in some of the uh, areas that you work in directly? We recognize that our youth are our future generations and they are the most powerful generations and youth around the world are very powerful in their beliefs and their stance and they are uh, struggling in these difficult times. However, they have a lot of means of resources and technology. In fact, our youth started one of the ba biggest civil rights movements since American Indian Movement, uh, Standing Rock uh, protests against the Dakota Access Pipeline. Also, our youth are back home, and my friends, we are our family, our youth are protecting 1.35 million acres of Mother Earth. We are the guardians, the warriors at the front lines, the gatekeepers of that land because we have ties to that land for much longer than anybody else in this country. And that way we provide our youth a, a lot of value to this country from a strong heritage to uh, this country. And, and that way um, we serve, I serve as a positive role model. Um, I do that by walking on the red road and um, encouraging them to pursue higher education. I'm the first person in my family to get a college degree. And we do this also by sustaining our culture and sharing our culture through our storytelling and our dances and our traditional dress. My grandmother made this dress. And so... It's beautiful. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I hope to show the women back home that it's beautiful, beautiful to be ourselves and our culture. That's great. Yes. And what uh, last question very quickly, what, uh, what are you hoping to get out of the summit? You know, out of the summit, what I see here to my left and to my right are our relatives. We are the human race. There's no difference between any of us. We're all the same. I'm really proud of you and that you are our family member and that you are our leader and you've helped elevate all of us and lifted us up together. And what I hope to see moving forward is this global family here at the summit. I want um, to for you to continue to include us and have us include us Include us at the table and have a voice at the table as indigenous people. That's great. Thank now, you. finally, we've got uh, from down under, we've got yeah. Daniel, who, <laughs> who uh, is been doing some amazing entrepreneurial work, tying together uh, some good business with uh, some good deeds. So t tell us a little bit about uh, the work that you've been doing and, and how did uh, the idea come to you and, and uh, how do you hope to grow it? Well, thank you, President Obama. I... Uh, I think for me it started with this one moment where I was in front of my computer watching stories of kids as young as four and five uh, walking to collect water for their family in parts of sub-Saharan Africa and I'm sitting there in tears because they're losing brothers and sisters to something that I get from, from, from the tap for free. It doesn't hurt my family and I remember feeling like, ah, this is so wrong and then I saw another number which was the $50 billion we were spending on bottled water globally. I'm like, bottled water is the dumbest product on the planet. But so, so we live in this world where there's extreme poverty and yet extreme consumerism. And this whole idea of thank you is, well, let's launch a, a social enterprise that sells consumer product, but gives 100% of the profit. Um, and we started with water, but now we're into body wash and hand wash and diapers if you ever need them. But we've got everything. And the, I'll pass that. Switch. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wait, well, well, all right, all right. But... Um, we're funding WASH and maternal infant health projects. And it's this whole idea of global citizenship that together we can combine the little bit that we do have to make an impact um, and, and solve some of you know, issues like extreme poverty, which should not exist in our generation. I've got two quick questions for you. Why, um, what, what is it that you, you uh, where'd you get that sense of compassion or empathy that uh, made you, uh, feel so moved by the sight of these kids because frankly you see a lot of that every day but not every young people ends up acting on those ideas and um, and did you always have sort of a can-do entrepreneurial let's you know start a business kind of spirit uh, or, or did these things all kind of evolve over time 
yeah, you know, I was at, at dinner last night sharing with our, our table that I was the kid at, at school running around selling everything. Uh, so, like, so you were always, yeah, you, you always uh, just had an idea. Yeah, hadn't, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm selling gobstoppers or, or a whole bunch of different things. A uh, pet, pet yabbies. What are, I'm sorry, what are gobstoppers oh, and pet sorry. yabbies? Yeah, that, okay. they, they, you, you just mentioned two things we don't yeah, you're understand. Right. Diapers. I should have said Got diapers. Exactly. That was my amateur <laughs> error. Gobstoppers. Gobs, like these lollies you chuck in your mouth, but uh -huh. I'm, I'm selling them. A, <laughs> ah, candy, candy, candy. So I was that kid. Now I'd sponsored a child through World Vision at about age 19 and I actually thought for me, honestly, that was ticking that box. Yeah. Um, I thought I'd done my bit for the world and I was wanting to get into business and entrepreneurship and then this moment confronted me and I, I reckon, I wanna give credit to my parents who will definitely be watching this, no doubt, but like it's like 2 a.m. in Australia, but they brought me up with this, this whole understanding of living your life for other people. Yeah. And I think I wanted to get into business, but when I saw this, it was like, well, why not use that passion um, to, to solve something that, that needs solving? And that's where we began. That's fantastic. So the, uh, what, what are you hoping to get out of the summit? Uh, and uh, how do you think uh, a network of leaders like you or entrepreneurs like you that are interested in business uh, and want to do well, but also want to do good. Uh, what do you think uh, they can draw from this and, and what kind of resources would be helpful in, in uh, uh, you achieving your goals? Yeah. You know, um, at, at this dinner that you'd set up last night, we were around the table and everyone at the table had done the most amazing things. And you're sitting there pinching yourself like, wow. Like, but there was this common thread as we we, we went deeper and deeper. We went past the resumes. We went down into the, the core and we realized it was this theme of isolation. Mm. So we're all busy. We know a lot of people. We're all speaking at conferences or one lady had 100,000 people in her movement. But there was this feeling of isolation. Mm. And I think we live in this generation. And actually, in your amazing speech yesterday, you said something at the end. And, and you did a, a great talk, you shared some guidelines, and your last guideline was a bit of a trivial one. And it was a bit of fun. You said, hey, while we're here for yourself and Michelle, no selfies. Yeah. And it's funny because when I came here, people said, are you gonna get a selfie with the president? And, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. But the, 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 gener <laughs> the, the generation we live in is this selfie generation, which is so like about self and it's about what you can take from a moment instead of stopping and listening. And you said that the why behind it was, we want to have not a photo, an in-depth conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think we need that. We need to move past that. Hey, here's what I do. Hey, can I get a photo with you too? Yeah. Hey, are you doing okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, how are you feeling? Are you isolated? Let's do this together. Yeah. And, and I think that is one of the, probably the most powerful things I've picked up here. And it, it's a heart that's come from, from you both. And I think it's inspiring and I want to be around more of it. Well, uh, all of you are, are uh, I think, representative of the talents and, and uh, ca capacities and creativity that uh, we're seeing here at the summit. And you know, part of our goal is to figure out how do we support work that you're already doing uh, and then how do we get the 15 and 16 and 17 year old versions of you guys uh, uh, to, 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 to help create more and more of you uh, over time because you know my, my strong belief is is that um, you know you will be able to come up with those answers if we're able to break that isolation and uh, if you are able to see that you're not alone because sometimes this work is hard but in fact that there are a whole lot of people uh, out there who are who are doing it and that we can learn from each other so you know it may turn out uh with you know the work that you're doing cassandra uh, that entrepreneurship on the reservation could really make a difference mm -hmm. in job creation instead of looking for resources from the outside what do we have from the inside well you might check you know check out uh, what Daniel's doing and maybe he can give you some tips in terms of how to set up uh, some sort of business, uh, you know, idea. And, you know, conversely, you know, uh, Mandeep, you, you may end up mm -hmm. thinking as you're supporting immigrant uh, rights and, and uh, how first generation uh, you know, young people are, are making their way some of the lessons that can be learned from the experience of the oldest uh, 
uh, Americans, th those who were here mm -hmm. first. So, uh, you know, the one issue that I think uh, uh, all of you uh, confront those is how to make sure that you stay in touch after a summit because what we don't want this to be a one-off and um, you know my hope is is during these dinner conversations during these breakouts etc you guys are exchanging information mm -hmm. uh, and feel free to take selfies with each other after <laughs> you have uh, yeah that's what I figured um, but 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 what's the role of of uh, you know, online communities, how do we take those and, and then also move them offline so they're not just uh, Instagrams and hashtags, but they're also, you know, something more substantial, something more real. Uh, or how are you using social networks to, to build your organizations and, and what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I think for me, uh, being first generation, being the one of the first people in my community to speak up about issues like uh, racial justice or um, getting people into the room, I very much use it as a platform to let people know what I'm thinking. So in, in hopes of empowering the other young people that I'm connected to and my family to also speak up about the issues that they confront. So for me, it's, it's, a, it's a form of empowerment of my voice and sharing that, but also it's, it's a tool to reach out to younger people who who are now very much on Instagram, are very much on Twitter and Facebook that I sometimes cannot reach because I might not be like always in the community, I might be moving around, but I know I can stay in touch and see how they're feeling and how they're doing through this platform, so yeah. Are there ways that you're encouraging them though to take action in their communities uh, in addition to, you know, saying they like your comment? Yeah. Uh, because because I think one of the concerns I have with, with mm -hmm. young activism mm -hmm. is People think the hashtag and mm -hmm. this and that is actually getting something done. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's spreading information, but mm -hmm. over time it's got to translate into yep. uh, you know, actual activity and mm -hmm. people meeting and gathering and yeah, I definitely resonate with that. I think exactly. usually there's an action item associated with for me. I don't, I, you know, you share the articles and do those things, but it's very much, hey, donate to this fund or show up for this meeting or this person's organized, apply for this fellowship. And so it's all about resource sharing for me as well. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Sandra, how about, uh, if, one thing I'm, I'm interested in, by the way, is, is uh, access, digital access, uh, because when I was president, my priority was to make sure that we got a lot of uh, broadband connectivity into rural communities, but sometimes uh, there are patches where that's not always the case. Uh, you know, A, is the access working? Uh, and B, uh, have you been able to use some of these digital platforms to help advance your work? Yeah, I, I love that we're talking about this because I feel like we, in the life of ac activism and advocacy, it's we're forging a path as this younger generation. And sometimes it's really difficult to feel the support that we need. And it feels oftentimes lonely because we're in our own worlds. But what I've been doing here is I didn't want that to be my experience. And so I've been, when I meet people, I ask them, why are you here? What is important to you? At the end of the day, when you don't have your millions of dollars, as I sit across dinner here in front of a billionaire, when you don't have that money, when you don't have those properties and that big car to take with you, those fancy things to the grave where we all grow or go with none of this stuff, what, how do you want people to remember you? And so I've been asking them this because when I go back home, I'm going to take these reasons and I'm going to share it with my friends and my family and these organizations and say, listen, we're not alone in this. There are people from all around the world that are trying to make good change and that are good people. And these are the things that matter to them. These are the things that matter to us. We are one of the same. We're a movement and we have power here in these times where oftentimes it feels like we don't. But I want to use that to reclaim our power and instill that and share that information when I go back home. In the reservations, we don't have access, and that's part of why our voice gets suppressed. We live in some of the most desolate lands. Um, and so what I do with technology is I always am going back home to the reservations, and I'm bringing those conversations and using my platform with my following and social media to share these messages, the struggles 
examples that we have using our nonprofit Pandos to elevate that voice, to raise that voice up because we're not alone in this. You'll realize and what I see is that a lot of times people don't know that in the United States, there's three sovereign powers and these sovereign nations between the U.S. government, the, the state level and these tribal nations. What, what people don't realize is that dynamic and how powerful it is and how we have to work together and how it's a beneficial relationship if we talk to each other and we have that dialogue and we really put a fi- uh, put put away the phones at the dinner table. In fact, that's something that I try to incorporate with my friends is you bring that basket here and I encourage you guys to do this too and try this initiative when you go out with your friends, put a basket out on the table, say phones here and whoever picks up the phone first has to pay for the dinner for oh, everybody I think else. That, 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 that is a really good tip. <laughs> now, I will say that when they came into the Oval Office, they had to leave it outside because <laughs> otherwise they couldn't come in. Uh, but I enforced it at the dinner table as well with Malia and Sasha. Um, yeah. the, the, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, out of time, but I want, uh, Daniel, uh, obviously you're doing stuff in Australia, but these days markets are everywhere. Uh, how do you think about exporting uh, what uh, Thank You is doing to uh, not just other uh, products, but also other markets? That's a cool question. Um, I think from the start, we always had a dream that this could be bigger. You know, we found out in America, people wash their hands as well. So they like do. The, the hand wash they could drink, wa- They drink they dr- the water so, all the time. So we're like, th- it's a global idea. And, and uh, so we're launching in New Zealand. That's the first country yeah. to kind of take it on. Well, closer. Yeah, a little closer. Yeah. And, and maybe one day it'll go further. But I think a big part of the thank you story isn't just here's what we've done and we'd like it to go further. And, you know, we want to make a bigger impact. That's fine. But it's actually what can you do with your journey? And I spend a lot of my time um, speaking, particularly in in schools to younger people. Just finished a while back a tour of like 10,000 nine-year-olds. And that makes you feel old when you're 29 and uh, they're nine. And (laughs) Wait till you're 56. Okay. (laughs) But like it's going, hey, yeah, you can sponsor a child and that's cool. But you can use what you have in your hand, your passion, your career to make an impact. You can make decisions now where you're going to, you know, put your energy and your time um, to leave this world better um, than you found it. And I think that's actually part of thank you. It's spreading that message and our products one day too. Well, if you've enjoyed this conversation with these amazing young people, uh, then it's given you a flavor of what's happening all throughout this summit. We're going to continue to be uh, sending out uh, all these live uh, events that are coming out of the summit. uh, And hopefully uh, you guys are going to continue to tune in uh, at uh, Obama Foundation. And uh, if you are interested in any of the outstanding organizations that we've heard from, uh, you know, at the end of the summit, one of the things we're going to be able to do uh, is to list connections and contacts uh, so that uh, you can potentially get in touch with Mandeep or Cassandra or, or Daniel and, and uh, see how you can plug into the great work that they're doing. Thank you so much, guys. You did wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.